Big Briars and today I thought I would do a little video on how I got into the modern horse hobby. This is going to be the first video on my channel so I thought it would be a good one to do to introduce you to me and so you can know a little bit more about my background. I'm joined today by my cat Mowgli and um, he's just going to be sitting there and hopefully you'll enjoy this video. I'm hoping my channel will be a mixture of unboxings, tutorials um, for a few bits of tack and just general hobby news and information. So let's get into how I got into the hobby. So I started really collecting wild horses probably when I was around nine, 10 years old and was just starting riding lessons. And the first types of horses that I had were grand champions, which I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they are essentially um, your very plastic toy, brushable mane and tail, magnet in the nose to pick up things type horses and I started off with a carpet herd of those and essentially my friends at the time were in primary school we were all mad on horses we all had our little carpet herds and would make up little stories about them or reenact riding lessons so I very much started out with them as toy horses I also had a few schleich around that time um, again, they were mainly used as toy horses and were very much, you know, not collectibles, if that makes sense. The next step I kind of took into the hobby was when I discovered Briars, and this would probably have been about a year after I started collecting the Grand Champions. Um, a little store near me was selling Briars, and the classics were the right size they could mix with my Grand Champions, and the right price for me to be able to sort of put some pocket money towards and afford. So we started having some Briar classics mixing in with the herd. Again, were more used as a carpet herd play horses, but they were something about them that we just liked the detail a lot more with them. Um, so moved away from the Grand Champions and more towards the Briars and particularly the classics. The next big step was a friend of mine had a traditional Briar, so she got I think their name was Sahara or one of the sort of new moulds at the time um, and I remember being really jealous of her because this was a really nice horse, it was really pretty, really detailed and I was like I really would like a traditional model um, because these seem to be you know so beautiful and at the time I was starting to learn a bit more about the model horse hobby through forums and things like that. So for my birthday, I asked for a traditional. And I thought I'd show you my very, very first Briar traditional. I can reach him. So this was the first Briar traditional model I got. And um, he's Red Rum, he was on the Lonesome Glory Moulds. And excuse the fact he's in tack, I made this a few weeks ago for a photo and I haven't got around to actually taking the photo yet. So he's just chilling it. Um, so he was my very first briar, has a very special place in my herd and probably would never leave just because of the sentimental value. He's very beat up, um, has a lot of scratches through the years and things, but I think your first briar traditional is always a special horse. So Red Rum is staying for the long haul. So he was my first traditional and from there my herd grew. So I got a few other um, Briar traditionals, I usually got them for birthdays, Christmases, and around the time I was having my herd expanding in terms of the traditionals, I was getting more involved on some of the online forums that were there during the time, and really interacting with the model horse hobby a bit more, entering a few photo shows, um, you know, just really enjoying it. I guess the next big step for me in the hobby was around 2007, so I'd have been about 12, 13 at the time, there was a competition advertised in Pony Magazine, which was run by Briar UK, to win a chance to go to the Kentucky Horse Park for Briar Fest that year, um, all included and paid for. I entered the competition originally thinking I had no chance of winning. Um, I mainly was hoping I might get a runners up prize, which was some vouchers, but I actually won the whole competition, which is insane. It's still insane to me this day that I actually went to Briar Fest. Um, and so the model that was the celebration model that year was this guy. So this is Rugged Pine to Lark. Um, so my scent and my family all were flown out to Kentucky for that year's Briarfest. And 
Bride UK did a fantastic job looking after us. I met all the guest horses. I went on special tours. Um, they gave me a few more models. And the biggest thing I guess that influenced me there was I kind of saw how big the model horse hobby could be um, and that there were actually a lot of people who were interested in it. So the next step for me was getting more involved. And whilst I was at the Briar Fest, I came across the live shows. So one of the staff members took me around the youth show that was going on there, um, explained a little bit more about live showing. And I decided that when I got back to the UK, I really, really wanted to get involved with that. So that was one thing I learned at Briarfest that year. The other thing that I got from Briarfest was the chance to purchase a special run, which in the UK, this is, you know, really hard to get hold of these Briarfest models. Um, and the one I picked for that year was Lady Liberty. She's on the rain mold and glossy. In terms of my taste today, she probably wouldn't be a special run I would pick if I she was a Briarfest special run like this year, um, just because the rain mold is too cartoony for me to do a lot with. But again, she has a real special place in my herd and I thought I'd just let her see the light of day and show you her today. And yeah, she was really special to me and like, summarises all the memories I have of Briarfest that year. So returning to the UK after I'd had an amazing time at Briarfest in 2007, I decided to get more involved in the hobby, more active and looked up some live shows. So I ended up doing a little bit of live showing. I think I probably went to two or three, um, but I was quite a young competitor. I was still, you know, sort of 14, maybe 13. Um, entering these shows so I do cringe a little bit when I think of some of the models that I entered and, and how they compared against some other people's models but it's a learning experience it was a bit of fun I got a few little ribbons so yeah it was it was nice and I haven't done live showing since and I'm not sure whether it's something I will be interested in doing today anymore but it was you know great again to get out and mix with the hobby and it fueled my fire a little bit more for a couple of years Sadly, it got to kind of GCSE years where there's lots of exams for us to take and the UK and A-levels and I was focusing more on what I wanted to do sort of post 18, so going to university and I decided to stop collecting. Um, I think partly because I was running out of space in the bedroom I had at my parents' house at the time, partly because I was struggling to get time to actually do anything related to model horses because of exams. And also, I guess I felt kind of a bit judged as well, um, collecting plastic ponies. That age, people I find tend to be quite judgmental and I didn't want to feel judged. So I think I stopped probably collecting because of that as well. I regret it now. You know, you should do what you love. And I wouldn't hesitate to answer questions on the model horse hobby now if someone confronted me about why I collect plastic horses. Um, but I stopped for a, probably a good five, six years, maybe a little bit more um, thinking about it and decided to rejoin the hobby last October. A bit weird how I got back into the hobby. Essentially, one day I decided to look up models because I hadn't been in the hobby for a couple of years. And I was blown away by the new molds that had come out, the detail, the beautiful sculptures and just kind of fell back in love again. I initially started with saying I would only collect fantasy horses, so I bought Xavier and Cascade and Caspian, but I couldn't resist. And as soon as I kind of moved out of my parents' house and bought my own house with more space, my collection has probably doubled in terms of the numbers of the traditionals. So I am very much back in the hobby. Um, at the minute, I'm not really showing too much. I've tried a few photo shows just while I've got some time and for a bit of fun but I am mainly in it for collecting and taking fun photos for Instagram. So that's a little background to me and the model horse hobby. Um, I thought I'd just do a little bit on what I'm hoping to do for the next couple of months in the hobby so you can get an idea of what's coming up on the channel and what sort of things I'm gonna be looking to do. So in the short term, Briarfest is coming up. As I'm sure people are aware, it was made into a virtual event this year. And so I am going to be attending. I was coming and ahhing about it for quite a while. Um, and then when they released the celebration tickets, which include the celebration horse, three days access, and the chance to buy store specials, which were my favorite this year anyway, 
I purchase a ticket. So I'm going to be having a bit of fun with Briarfest this year and hoping to pick up some of the store specials. I am also going to be uploading some tutorials. So I've made a little tutorial for how to make a basic bridal that you can use for photography purposes. Like I say, I don't live show, so I don't play my tack to be live show quality, but I think it's always nice to have a straightforward and simple tutorial to start with anyway. I'll probably do a few more different tutorials on a few different bits if, as and when I get the time to, to film them. I'm going to be doing some unboxing videos because I've got ponies in the post. Yes. Um, and probably um, we'll find some other stuff to talk about in the hobby too. I hope that is been a really good video for you in terms of getting to know me. I'd love to know your model horse collecting stories. I always find those videos really cool and really interesting. So if you do have a video you think would be something I'd be interested in, then let me know. And thank you very much for watching. I'm hoping you can join me again for some more videos. And I hope you enjoyed seeing a few of my models um, of my collection. I just thought I'd pop them in for a bit of fun. Bye, take care.